Okay, this is the final video I've been uh, promising for ages. Uh, the Ladybird book, Making a Transistor Radio, 1972. And uh, I built my first one around about 1974. I think it was Christmas, 74. And uh, I finally finished this one. Got it working. There was a few teething troubles, but that's to do with the age of the components. But... Uh, yeah, it's um, it's not a perfect replica by all means. It's um, it's it's the same circuit diagram, but the the actual final radio is uh, as we can see from this picture. Um, the first thing you would notice is mine's re reversed because um, I'm left-handed, so my speaker is this side. And uh, the other thing is the tuning control, which was here. Um, literally, it is half a wrist turn to make the tuning capacitor, which is this part here, um, to make it actually tune uh, from one end to the other. It, it's just far, far too quick. And I discovered that when I was a youngster. But uh, vernier dials, which gives you sort of lots and lots of turns, and they're graduated zero to a hundred um, so it gives you a sort of a tuning scale as well so uh, they're very expensive back then and they still are now uh, one other departure was this control you see here which is this part here uh, this is called the regeneration or reaction control and um, the reason I've got that is because when you tune this and it will tell you in the book, when you tune this to a station, you've got to adjust, adjust this little trimmer capacitor. It's called a compression trimmer. It's about that big. And uh, you'd have to adjust it. Then you tune it. And then you just... So back in the day, it was a real pain in the backside. So this thing gives you instant access to it. But um, medium wave just doesn't have the radio stations it used to have, unfortunately. And uh, this will pick up a few. Um, I have had it going. And uh, I'll just show you the construction inside. Uh, the, the other departure from, um, from the book was he used, as you can see in an illustration there, he used this screw and cup way of trapping the wires underneath um, the cups. I found that a bit hit and miss when I was a youngster back in the 70s. So what I did is I used copper plated panel pins and soldered them all together now the soldering here is terrible um it's not my normal standard of soldering the reason being is two things one i put the pins a little bit close together so it made the construction a bit messy and number two uh, these three transistors here this one this one and this one they're from the 1960s and they weren't particularly brilliant back then and 50, 60 years on, uh, they got various issues. One of them's called leakage. Um, it just means that, you know, the, the current flowing through them in layman's terms isn't, you know, going where it's meant to go. And they're called leaky and they're just not amplifying the way that they should. Um, but anyway, uh, as you can see, I've got crocodile clips on the battery clip. Um, the only the only nine volt battery I've got spare is, is down to about seven and a half volts. So I've plugged this into uh, a mains power supply. And if we switch it on. The volume control works, but there you go. So it does work does work it works well enough for what it is I'm sure that's interference from something in the house let's see if we can see what else is out there
I do believe there's two stations there. They're all crammed at one end of the medium wave band nowadays. But there we go. There we go. Oh, that'll be Premier Radio, which is a religious station. I'm just adjusting the reaction control, but to be honest, not a lot of feedback happening because this particular transistor is so bad now that it's really not doing its job. This is this is what happens when you use components from the 1960s and 70s, well, probably the 60s. So we, so we can get any more. That one's really quiet. And we're on full volume because the other two transistors really aren't doing their job either of amplifying. Just about hear that. Anyway, there we have it. The Ladybird book written by the late Reverend George Dobbs, who was an amateur radio Enthusiast like me. Um, 1972. So I built my first one, 1974. This is about the fifth one that I've built. And I probably won't build any more. This one literally was to show that this book, you, you can still to this day build a radio from this book. Great fun project, very educational. You build the radio in stages. You start with a basic crystal set at the beginning and you build up to this uh, final one. So by no means do you have to build the final one. I think the ones uh, preceding it that you build, you know, they go from the ridiculously simple, the crystal set that doesn't even need external power source, no batteries, no solar panels, no, no mains electricity or anything. It works purely for radio waves. And then uh, you build up to this final regen. As I say, this is about the fifth that I've built since 1974. I don't think I'm going to build any more. But uh, I do have all of the components to build, one or two more. So if anyone's interested, I suppose you could message me and uh, we, we could uh, arrange something entirely up to you but anyway this is just showcasing this book and uh the finished product mark mike zero juliet charlie foxtrot m0 jcf is my amateur radio call sign cheers